Hi, I'm Janne Karuska. I'm future neuroscientist from Finland, but currently doing my thesis in Australia. In today's episode, I'm gonna share some tips related to thesis writing or actually also for reading. So reading and writing, how to read articles for your thesis and also write the thesis. So if you are gonna write or you are currently writing your master's thesis, this will be super useful episode. But if you are writing anything, I would say, for example, blog post, this might help you. So I hope you enjoy today's episode. Okay, so when we talk about master's thesis, first of all, you need to have a topic. In my field, in neuroscience and especially uh, in Finland, it usually goes so that you take part of some project. So you will actually do some kind of lab work, but it also includes reading a lot of papers. So yes, first you need to apply the project. If you wish to hear more about how to apply, what all you should say in application, just leave a comment and let me know if you are interested in about that, so I can do video about that too. But today we will focus mainly to the writing and reading part. So in my case, and I bet most of the cases when you are doing the master's thesis, the project is already kind of there. So you take part of maybe to some bigger project and then you have kind of sub project there. So in a way it's easy, it's a ready-made, but it includes a lot of work. And I will share you all the tips how to make it easier. So after you have got your place to do the project, you have the topic, start reading. Get familiar with the topic. Get familiar with the names in that field. Quite often, because the supervisor has been in that field quite a long time, so they might point out some papers which are really useful for you. So don't hesitate to ask from where to start with the papers. In my case, I got a bunch of papers, which also other people are using in the group, and also I use the papers which they have used in grant applications. So the papers which are meaningful. In addition, if you are taking part of journal clubs, pay attention if there are some papers you could use. And when you start the reading, you will maybe notice the names, because the papers are always saying that Okay, this fact is in this paper. So you can go to that paper and go forward and forward and find more and more papers from that field. And when you read enough, you will notice which are the papers or the authors who are really known in that field. I'm not saying that don't use papers where the author is not well known, but it's good to check those out, which are really well known and maybe use at least some of them. Okay, now comes the most important tips what comes to reading the papers. So first of all, I have them in a million places. Okay, I have one folder which I just have in a cloud and just in case in my memory stick and hard drive and everywhere, just I will not lose the papers. And then I have named each of them. So I just copy paste basically the heading of the paper and then I put number before that name so they are in order. This will help you later on because the next step is to create Excel sheet. You can use whatever you find most useful but for me Excel sheet is working perfectly. So I have all the papers numbered and the heading is there and then they are in order in this Excel sheet. Then there is section for comments in this Excel sheet. And how I read the papers is so that I read them briefly through, especially introduction. I check the pictures and the text, what is told about the picture. Then I read conclusions or discussion. Those I read kind of more deeply and the other parts I might like look through what they have done, like methods. In this way, when I don't read it deeply, like the whole text, I save some time because I will not use every single paper what I'm reading. So I check them through, I highlight the parts which I find most useful for me. Then I check the highlights and I get the image what is the most important point in that paper for me and I will write a short comment about that to my Excel sheet next to that paper. And the reason why I'm doing this is, first of all, I'm gonna read 
plenty of papers I will not remember from where I got the information. So it just makes it easier afterwards when I'm like, oh, there in one of these papers, there were this comment about this and I can't remember which one it was. So the comment helps for that. And also, even though I wouldn't use that paper now, but I might need it later. So the comments are also important, maybe later on. And how I remember which paper I'm going to use in my thesis is so that I color code the comment. So if there is a comment that this paper was about this topic and this was the main point, then if I'm going to use it in my thesis, I will color code it as a green. If I'm definitely not going to use it, I will mark it as a red and leave it as a kind of blank if I'm not yet sure if I'm going to use it or not. If your thesis is about a few topics or you need to get information about a few topics, like in my case, I will tell you later on, I'm color coding also the topics. So in my thesis, I have a kind of three main topics I need to understand more. So I use three different colors to just uh, color code the name of the paper, not the comment. Comment will be just color coded if I'm going to use it or not, but the paper name will co be color coded so that it matches to the topic. So if they are from the same topic. So one of my topics is eating disorders, especially anorexia. So those one I may be marked as uh, yellow and the other topic is psychedelics. So maybe I use the color blue so I can find them easily. I was thinking at some point that how many papers I should read. I had some amount in my head that maybe for I have three main topics that I would use around 10 papers per topic. But then at some point I realized that I don't need to be so strict with that. I was also thinking, is that enough? Like 10 papers per topic? Uh, but this is actually maybe university related. So you need to also ask from, from your university what is kind of too much references. But in my case, I realized at some point when I read plenty of papers that, okay, now I'm starting to get the whole image. Of course, I'm not understanding the whole field completely, but I'm starting to get like more clear image what these people are talking about because the papers are talking similar topics. They are overlapping. Even the research wouldn't be the exactly the same. So after I got this feeling, I was like, okay, now I'm ready to move on. And what happens next? So then I went back to those papers, which I have marked as a green. So those which I'm going to use in my thesis. And remember that I have also highlighted the main things from the paper, which I would like to use. So while reading, I'm highlighting things. And the next step is that I copy paste those highlighted things to separate document. And what is important is that you keep the name of the paper and the number also in that document too. So you will not lose from where did I copy paste this. So I will take the number and the heading from that paper to separate document. Then I will copy paste the highlighted parts to that document. And before starting writing, I have my thesis draft where I will structure things. So I will have a headings and maybe subheadings. What are the things I would like to talk and which order? I'm not writing my thesis in an order, but it helps me to understand what kind of image I will or I want to give to other people. So it's easier to read. Okay, now I have the thesis draft. I have the headings, subheadings there. And then I have the separate document with the copy pasted material. Then obviously, because I have read many papers and they might talk about similar things, I need to go through everything a million times to get all the things for like under that subheading, which I would like to. So I found it useful that in that copy pasted document, I'm going to highlight again things which are related to one subheading. But I'm working with one subheading at a time, so I will not highlight the whole paper with different colors. I'm just highlighting the parts which I think are related to that specific subheading, which I'm going to write next. Then when those are highlighted, you can even move them to the separate document. But 
at this point you start to have a million documents so I would keep just two so just going through those highlighted parts and then I start writing and if I'm using that one thing from that copy pasted paper that highlighted copy pasted paper or document sorry document then I will turn the font color different when I have actually used it so I don't need to check like did I already mention this one or this one so I know that okay this is used because it's the font is gray and if you are not using any kind of a reference app you can just take the number you have gave to the paper and insert that to your thesis draft that this is from this paper so there are several apps people are using like Mendeley and the other one is Sotero. I started to use Mendeley and in a way I find those useful but when I created the reference list it somehow didn't look as I would like it to look. It's just it, it wasn't consistent so that is the reason why I'm also using this number system and let's see what I will do after that. I'm always, when I'm starting writing, I'm like, okay, this time I'm really organized with my reference list and I will make it easier. And this happens every time. So if you have any tips, feel free to share your tips with me. So the idea in these apps are just that you just once need to tell all the information from the paper and then you choose the style you want it to be in your document, uh, the reference style, and then you could just uh, search it and insert it there and it will create the reference list also automatically. So I think I will later on use that and then I need to check them through again just that it seems nice. So I'm not trusting to these apps too much. And obviously uh, it's not allowed to copy paste the things you have already copy pasted to your actual thesis. So use your own words. And what I noticed is that there are a lot, lot, lot information which could be nice to mention and nice to go deeper, nice to explain, but you can't do that. Otherwise, it will be million books you will write. So focus to the things which are important for your thesis. So keep in mind what is your project and where the focus is and just write about maybe something surrounding topics but remember the focus to the actual one. And actually about this surrounding like information I was thinking what is too much? What is kind of useless? And then, because this thesis is also for me, and mainly for me, it's my learning process. And I'm really excited about the topic and I want to understand it as much as possible in this short time. So I need to keep that in my mind, that this is my learning process and I will write the things which makes it clear to me. And I bet this is really good kind of mindset because someone who will read it maybe doesn't know anything about the topic. So when you have made it so that it's kind of supporting your learning and kind of describing things in a really nice way, it's easier for others to read it too. If possible, I hope it's possible for everyone, get feedback. Quite often it can be supervisor, so giving your comments, not correcting you, but giving the comments where you could improve. Because in a way you became pretty blind to your own text when, when you are writing it a lot and focusing to the topic a lot. So it's good to get extra pairs of eyes just to check it through and give your comments. And one last point, which I kind of mentioned already, is that you don't need to write it in an order. And even though you are creating the structure in the beginning, it can be changed later on. For example, in my case, I have the structure, it will be introduction, then I will move to materials and methods, then I will have my results, and then I will have a discussion part. So it's kind of following the same structure as the actual papers but now i'm a little bit considering should i have a like kind of literature review there also because the introduction part is growing a lot uh, so i need to ask if it's allowed 
or even if it's needed or can the introduction part be that long because my topic is so huge so obviously it's growing really fast uh, so it's also a skill to keep it short which I'm usually actually really good at I was a bit worried if I managed to create enough text but so far it has grown nicely so let's see what happens with that so yeah I really hope you got all the tips and you found them useful and keep in mind that this kind of when you learn this technique it just comes really natural it come becomes your habit and you will work with that later on you can use the papers later on you have the comments there you have color coded things so it will make your life easier even the work would now be a little bit much especially if you are already writing the thesis and too many things in your head but trust me this will make it way more easier all right hope you enjoyed today's episode See you on next time. Bye.